I want you to stop excluding carbohydrates because carbohydrates is one of the most important energy source for your cells. Meaning that we want to maintain a metabolism in our cells based on thyroid hormones. There are two types of hormones in your body. It's uh, when it comes to thyroid, it's T4 and T3 that are the main ones. There are other ones as well, but there are, we don't need to talk about them. We have to talk about the main part, T3 and T4. T3 is the active, T4 is the inactive hormone, all right? And the active one is particularly interesting because that is the active hormone that goes to the tissues and actually create metabolism in the cell, cellular level. If you don't eat enough carbohydrates, you will actually affect your thyroid levels. And for me, it's so surprising because no one is talking about it. I've seen a lot of health channels. I've seen a lot of bodybuilders, sports science, talking about testosterone levels and the macronutrients and all the proteins you have to get into your body and blah, blah, blah. All of that has less importance if your thyroid levels is not optimal, if you don't have good thyroid levels. I'm not talking about you being sick. All right, I don't, I'm not talking about you have sickly low levels of thyroid hormone, but you can be on the lower scale and that will still mess up with your life in terms of health anyway. You have to make sure that your thyroid function is working first, all right? And now let's go into what I believe you have to do with things you're eating, all right? So let's talk about eating. Well, you should eat potatoes, you should eat pasta, you should eat bread, you should eat all that, because that is what your cells need, all right? And this goes, you know, against like all the, the health gurus out there, which I feel are clueless because they don't think about the thyroid function. Only a person that don't take the science of biology seriously, especially, especially specifically when it comes to cellular biology in human body, I cannot take anyone serious if they don't talk about the thyroid function, all right? And uh, therefore, I say most of you guys out there talking about uh, health and carnivore diet and LCHF and all that, I think you all are bullshitting a bit because you don't know what you're talking about since you never mentioned the thyroid function. And the LCHF or the carnivore diet's effect on the thyroid hormones. You don't even mention that. It's just crazy how amateuristic it is, all right? So let's stick to the most important science there is, all right? And that is actually the science of endocrinology that are tailored towards the thyroid function, all right? So what I believe is the best way of eating is to eat what you like, all right? That contains carbohydrates, together with proteins and fat, obviously, right? So a rough estimate would be that you eat 50% carbohydrates and then you eat uh, enough proteins and fat as well but at least 50% should come from carbohydrates. carbohydrates. And uh, you have to be smart. I mean, first of all, you should eat what you like to eat. On the other hand, you also need to see your calorie uh, intake as like your wallet, all right? If you eat a cake, for example, that contains 600 calories, then you have to start saving your calories for, for a good meal that contains maybe 1,500 calories, they're going to make you completely full. Because if you're going to eat a cake that, that contains 600 calories, and then you're going to eat another thing that contains also 600 calories, and you're not even full, it was just a pure pleasure, for example, then you don't have so much to spend anymore when it comes to the, 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 the actual meal that you're going to have. Because I am a strong believer when it comes to calorie in, calorie out, all right? I know that a lot of doctors in, um, I don't know, dietitians and, and doctors, supposed to be doctors in health or whatever they are, are, are telling you that, no, 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 you should not uh, trigger the insulin level because that is not good. You should focus on no carbs at all because that is what we ate a thousand years ago. I also think in some way that the human body actually changed from, from uh, let's say 10,000 years ago till now. <laughs> I, I, I think, I don't think you can use that data or you don't even have that data, you're just guessing and then believing that we are working like this one now. That's bullshit. We see directly that we, when you don't eat carbohydrates, you're going to have horm hormonal disbalances, unbalanced hormone levels. That means everything for your metabolism in the cells to make you younger or keep you young, keep you healthy, keep all that kind of thing. And then now they want to exclude carbohydrates. Are they fucking crazy? Uh, yeah, that's what, how I feel. 
that's also one of the reasons why I'm making this channel right now because I think it's low, so much BS out there that someone have to stand up and tell how it actually is, all right? Back again, you have still have to make sure that your body is using all the calories that you are eating. One of the best things I believe you can do is to actually be one to 200 calories in deficit. That's what I believe is the best way in order to maintain great health. But let that deficit come from training. Let's say that you are a male and you weigh about 90 kilos around. Well, then you probably need about 2,500 calories from food intake. 2,500. That's it. Not more. 2,500 calories is good intake. Don't take less. Because if you take less, then your cellular, don't, your cellular function or the thyroid function don't get enough energy also. It's much better to make sure that you have those 2,500 calories intake of food and then let the body work to get you down into the one to 200 deficit every day. You can train maybe like three times a week, uh, four times a week, even, even better if you want to inc you know, include aerobic exercise, you know, aerobic training like running, jogging, together with uh, strength training. That is going to be great for you to actually keep your body in shape, in an active mode, together with having a long-term deficit of 150 to 200 calories per day. It's enough. Now you maintain a very good health, all right? That's what I believe. But you have to still have to be like this economist when it comes to calories. Like, I don't want to, you know, uh, eat too much. I don't want to have excess of calories. You have to keep thinking about that over and over again. And many times, let's say that you now are in a situation where you actually eat a lot. I mean, it's Christmas, you want to eat a lot of food, right? Then no problem if you do it once in a while, because I mean, obviously you're going to lose time, but if you're going to have a standard day-by-day -day behavior of, of calorie deficit of 2000 cal or 200 calories per day, I mean, 10 days is already 2000 in deficit. If you once in a while, let's say once a month or something, just eat a little bit more than you normally eat, I mean, then you suddenly have, what can I say, space to do that because you are in general in deficit. So that will still balance it it's out automatically. If you want to be hardcore like me, then if I would eat 3,500 calories today, I would just eat 1,500 calories the next day. Really choosing soups and things that make me full without containing so much calories. So that is what I believe is the gold. I don't think you need to care so much about what you're eating. Because what I believe is that life long term is about enjoying eating, enjoying you know, pizza, enjoying hamburgers, enjoying cakes, enjoying everything. You just have to be smart about it. You cannot eat so you go, you're going to get a lot of access of calories. That is the bad thing. And now let's also talk about the hysteria about the insulin levels and blah, blah. Do you really think that you are going to crash in terms of sugar spikes and insulin levels when you're eating carbohydrates and sugar and all that, that is less than thousand calories? I don't think so. I don't think so at all. I think they can even make wonders in your body. The only times when I believe carbohydrate is really bad, worse than fat, worse than protein, when things suddenly make sense, that is when we're talking about the excess of calories long-term. So for example, let's say you just ate your meal that contain 2,500 calories. Breakfast, lunch, 2,500 calories. And now you start eating cakes based on that. You're eating cakes, ice creams, you're eating, you know, uh, chips and a lot of things that actually spike your blood sugar. They actually do affect your insulin levels. Now it's really bad because the body just don't know what to do with those calories. And it's messed up with your insulin level. They're actually building up, building up, building up, building up. And then now you, 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 you start making a huge gap because you just want to eat a lot of carbohydrates outside your, your calorie need. That is what I see is the problem actually. And um, I mean, if you're doing it once in a while and then compensate that by having a deficit of 200 calories every day, no problem, yeah? But if you don't do that, if you just want to have a, have a you know, a calorie excess or uh, abscess or too much of calories, 1,500 every day, for example, and you're having that every day, every day for long term. Of course, you're going to have problems with your insulin levels, the blood sugar levels and all that. But people don't talk about the fundamentals. Like, but what do you eat that much then? 
decrease your eating. Other thing that I feel that doesn't work for me at all, and I've been you know, talking with this to a lot of experts out there as well, is that they believe that if you only eat protein and fat, you're going to be full, and then you're not going to want to eat anything else because you're full, right? I think that is not true for so many people. Even though they try to, to come with evidence that, oh, you don't spike your blood sugar and therefore your, your, your sugar level is, you know, stable and balanced and then you don't want food and blah, blah, blah. It doesn't work in practical for so many people, right? For me, for example, one time I ate really like only what I'm supposed to eat. It's a couple of nuts, I eat like a steak, I forget about, you know, the carbohydrates and I eat like some vegetables and all that. And I calculated, it's like, oh, my calorie is now about 2,000 and I'm, I'm not full at all. I'm not full, I don't feel full. And then later on, obviously I became hungry, right? And then next day, I like, you know, screw it. I just going to eat a bloody delicious pizza. They, were, they had like 2,000 calories. I just, ah, eat the pizza directly and enjoy the pizza. I was full the whole day, all right? I was full the whole day. I didn't need anything more. And then if I really want to keep myself in within the calorie range, I just ate maybe like three or four eggs. That's it. And then I was happy. So what about that? You can't, you know, like only meat and this kind of stuff versus pizza. And the pizza actually make me more full than the other stuff. So I think there's a lot of hypocrites, uh, hypocritical thinking there as well. Scientific theory is one thing. Practically is another. And here I think they lack hugely to, to balance those two. Anyway, guys, I hope you like this video. Really, subscribe, like, and share this video to all your friends and so on, because I think this is, have, is something important. We have to take this one up to the surface, all right? I have been studying this since 25 years back. I had a thyroidectomy when I was very, very young, uh, in, my, in my teenager teenage years. Uh, and obviously, I have been very, very careful about my, my health, about my thyroid hormone levels, and also got the extreme important knowledge about the fundamental of metabolism in the body that actually means everything, all right? And the only people that actually knows about it are endocrinologists that specialize in thyroid function. Those knows that, and they are also very frustrated why the public doesn't know about it. That is what I wanted to say, and I hope I see you in the next video.